Hello everyone, today we got, I guess, a red video? Because we're going to discuss terrible songs from great bands. Oh, hang on a second. Okay, we are looking at terrible songs from great bands. Now, a few of these songs I think the community kind of likes, so look out for those. So, straight off the bat, we're going to talk about my absolute favorite band of all time, Dream Theater. I know, stop picking on Falling Into Infinity. I will continue to pick on Falling Into Infinity. I do not like it. And what song are we picking? You Not Me. What an absolutely ugly and awful song. The opening riff is annoying. The lyrics are awful. <sighs> the chorus is so cheesy and edgy. <sighs> Just the line alone, being around you is driving me crazy? Are you kidding me? <laughs> you guys are only fantastic at writing lyrics. And then you churn out this. Mm. And the bass line, the do 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 It's awful. All five minutes of this song is just... Mm. It doesn't even have, like, a solo from anyone to redeem it. <sighs> oh, here's a fun one. This entire Green Day album is awful. It's probably the worst Green Day album. Thank God it's only like 28 minutes long, because most of these songs are so painful. What am I signaling out there? Oh yeah. oh yeah. I didn't even know that this song was Green Day. It's such a giant left turn in the worst way imaginable. <sighs> Again, every aspect of this song is terrible. <laughs> Enough said. Okay, yeah. We're going to talk about two songs from this album, which are awful. One of those being Invisible Kid, which I'll probably single out as the actual worst Metallica song. The riffs suck, and for some reason, James and Kirk are playing in Drop G Sharp. You guys are not a gent band, you guys are not a deathcore band, you guys are not a a death metal band, or a heavy prog metal band. Why are you tuning this low? It does not work at all. And the riff they're playing is so annoying. You have the infamously awful production and the even more infamous snare tone. Oh my god. The ping, ping, ping. It's awful. And this song is eight and a half minutes long. Oh. And it's like three or four riffs the whole time. It just drags and drags and drags. <sighs> and the lyrics for each verse is basically exactly the same. I re-listened to this song yesterday, and for basically the entire eight minutes, I was just like, uh. <laughs> We're going to be talking about a few more songs that are just, on top of being awful, way too long for their own good. And how many do we have that fit that category? One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> Now, what was the other song I was signaling out from here? Oh, yeah, yeah. Purify. This song is awful. Again, you get a, such an annoying riff. The Bluesy riffs normally don't do it for me that much. Pantera do it well, Megadeth do it well. The Dream Theater do it well, it's Dream Theater. They do so many things well. And Metallica can pull it off sometimes. That riff is so lame, though. And the chorus where James is intentionally singing off key. Oh, it just grates on you. Sometimes intentionally off-key singing sounds really good. In this case, you just want to turn it off. And <laughs> in the chorus where Lars is playing this really fast beat, it's like... Bada, 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 bada. You get to hear the amazing St. Angus snare. That was a joke, in case you couldn't tell. Ugh. Oh, I'm out of coffee. 
I should have done this metal mount down style and have some Jack Daniels next to me. It's ten past nine in the morning though, so you might go for me, yeah. <laughs> next we got a a cover song from one of the most legendary bands of all time. A band with seven amazing albums and one of the most legendary physic figures in all of metal. I don't want to do this. This is a bonus track and a cover, but it completely ruins the flow of this album and I have to talk about it. Got a fund by death. I am sorry. <laughs> I adore this album. It's like a 9.5 out of 10 for me. Basically, every song is amazing. Then they end it with a kiss cover. Oh. <laughs> Like I said about Purify, it's another bluesy riff. I don't, I don't like those most of the time. And hearing Shark of Death growl through the chorus. No. And Sean Reinhardt, one of the greatest drummers you will ever hear in your whole life, doesn't even play anything interesting across the song. Hmm. Next, we're talking about Iron Maiden. As soon as you see this cover, you know exactly what song we're talking about. The Angel and the Gambler. Oh, just like, what song was it? Invisible Kid. It's way too long. It's so repetitive. The lyrics suck. Blaze Bailey, I think, is not that great of a singer. And the fact that his range is so small, <laughs> this makes it even more annoying to listen to. It's just... There's that cool, clean instrumental break in the middle of this song. Maybe like four or five minutes in. That part's pretty good. The rest of the song just... Uh. And then there's Weekend Warrior. A song which I think is actually slightly worse. Because while I said that this song, Angel and the Gambler's got a few bits in it I like, none of Weekend Warrior I like. It just sounds like a bad ACDC song. Like, sometimes Iron Maiden will pull out a rock song, have a break from being the amazing traditional heavy metal band that they are, and we'll just write a rock song. The Riding of the Wall from the new album kind of fits that, and uh, a lot of No Prayer for the Dying as well. This song is just awful. The, I was reading the lyrics the other day, and I was like, <laughs> whoever wrote this should have left Iron Maiden, because <laughs> it's awful. Wasn't this, this the last album with Bruce and Vocals, speaking of which? No, there's one more after that. <sighs> Iron Maiden, why did you write these awful, awful songs? <laughs> Next we're talking about another one of the greats. It's Black Sabbath with Born Again. This whole album is a miserable experience. It's not good. Some people like it. I mean, okay, you do you. It's, it's not good though. Come on. And some people even like those Blaze albums a lot. Okay, okay. What song are we talking about? Is Hero the Hero? That riff is so annoying. The vocals in this song are actually really good though. That's about the only good thing about it though. The drumming is so basic and lifeless. The bass is way too loud in the mix. It's like a shadowing Iomi. On that note, apparently the recording gear on this album broke or something. And, you know, since this is one of the periods of the band where they, did, where they were doing so much drugs, they are blowing all their money on drugs and food and drink, blah, 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 alcohol, that when the audio equipment broke, they couldn't even fix it. So whoever mixed this album mixed it on broken speakers. And, oh, it's no wonder, because the final result is terrible. It's just such an ugly album to listen to. Okay, I'm really going hard with the legendary bands today. <laughs> Metallica Death, Iron Maiden, Black Sabbath, and now Megadeth. Megadeth is an amazing band. I'll probably rank them one day as well. <clears throat> These two songs though. Jesus. I'm actually on a Discord, which is a whole bunch of fellow metal guys. I think a few of you are really excited to watch this video, so hello. Comment below. And someone suggested that Moto Psycho. 
That sounds so English. Whenever I say that, it sounds so English. Motorcycle. <laughs> the the opening the the main riff, I guess you could say, is just so clunky and annoying. The chorus is awful. And I just found out yesterday that there's a music video for this song, which I watched, and it's also terrible. The end of the 90s and the early 2000s was a really, really strange time for Megadeth. And so it was 2012, because they released The Abomination that is Super Collider. It's got a couple of okay songs, but the rest is so bad. It was a chore to sit through Super Collider. And all songs I single out as being the worst. The title track. For one, the music video is shockingly awful. It's just Dave Mustaine telling his fictional daughter to not hang out with this guy. And those two, like, little spaceship or something. Like, what are those? Bottle rockets, I'm like, And then the other half of the music video is Dave Allison in a school. Which a lot of people pointed out looking back is kind of odd, given what happened to Dave Allison. If you don't know the story, I don't want to get into that. You get the idea, though. These Megadeth songs are awful. Now, as soon as... This is another legendary, legendary, legendary band. Who just have that one album that stands out as being absolutely atrocious. That's one of the most hated metal albums of all time. From the legendary Florida death metal band. We're, of course, talking about Morbid Angel. Yeah, you know exactly where I'm going with this. The opening track and Radical. When I listened to that album, the one and probably only time, those two songs just stuck, stuck out at me for being so awful, so corny, so annoying, so overly long. Talk stream is like six and a half minutes. It has no reason to be so repetitive. Radical starts off with that really cool riff. The doom, 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 doom. Then after that, it's just awful. The whole time. And the drums are so loud. They're probably compressed to all hell because every single beat just sounds like that. And it's not in a good way either. You want death metal to be intense and in your face. This is not death metal though. This is like a weird fusion of industrial rock and stadium rock. Ah. Uh... It's so bad. And all across this album, and especially on Song 2 Extreme, it's like this electronic drum. You have Phil Young, who's arguably almost just as good as Paul Sandoval, an absolute machine behind the drums. And you replace Tim on a lot of this album with a drum machine? No... <laughs> And Too Extreme is such an irritating song. It's got all the sliding riffs in the opening, where it's just like... That song makes me so angry each time I listen to it. Many if I just feel like torturing myself. <laughs> if I'm like, hey, I want to intentionally listen to a really awful song just to get angry for no reason. What's my go-to song? Too Extreme. With number two being You Not Me by Dream Devil. Oh my god, that song is an atrocity. Burn it. Burn every song on this list. They all suck. Too Extreme might just be the worst song here, though. It's so bad. Yet again, I'm just, just going to be yeah, checking. Basically, this entire album is a disgrace. <laughs> the song Existed Full Gore is pretty good. And there's, like, bits here and there. Where, um, there's like a cool riff or a cool vocal line, a good drum beat. Most of this album sucks though, oh my god. <sighs> I got another one for you prog metal fans. We could touch experiment three. Which song do I single out though? What's it called? Chris and Kevin's Amazing Adventure. It's a five minute jam session that goes 
nowhere. It's just weird sounds. Really groovy drum beats, actually. That's probably the best thing about this song. Because, oh, Mike Portnoy is, is such an incredible drummer. And he carries this song. And a lot of it's just weird ambient noises. LTE3 had a lot of parts that just kind of drag. This is the worst offender, though. Uh, not good. Oh, I'm just remembering the songs that we still haven't got to yet. Oh my god. Okay. I hope I slip not. Awesome album. I do think the debut is a little bit better overall. It's way more aggressive. It's debatably even heavier. The title track to this album, though, is not good. It's just kind of the weird atmospheric bass line with, like, isn't there a synth over or something? I don't know. <laughs> then it goes to a heavy riff, then it's back to that for a few minutes. Heavy riff, back to that for a few minutes, and it's like 16 minutes? Slipknot has no reason to make a song that long. And when they did try it for here, just did the obvious, it, none of it worked. None of it. That's about all I want to say. Next is another one that someone over on that Discord recommended to me. As soon as I just heard the name of this song, I was like, are you joking? This band covered this song? Helter Skelter by Celtic Frost. It completely butchers the original. It doesn't even have the iconic guitar riff. The lyrics are super different. The, the the guy who suggested the song to me sound, said it sounded like if Celtic Frost tried to write an awful industrial song. That's exactly it. The singer whose name I don't recall right this moment is just whispering you in your ear basically the whole song. It gets so annoying. I remember I was listening to this song while I was in the chat for that Discord. I was like, you guys are right, this song is an atrocity. Now, Catholic Frost is a band I want to get more into. I listened to To Make a Theory on for my own time recently. It's solid. You can tell there's a lot of Slayer influence. Then you chuck on this. Why? And the front cover is like... This, is, this was like a cover album or a demo or something? Instead of an official studio release? Like, what is this cover? You don't just... You're a high to your band. You could easily get an artist to make a good cover for you. And you make a cover that's a distortion pedal? If I saw that distortion pedal in a shop, though, I'd be like, that's cool. It's camo. I need that. <laughs> uh, oops. <laughs> that's the song I was actually going to get rid of, because while it is bad, it's not quite worthy of being on this list. All you black metal fans out there, calm down. We're talking about... Rung Dang Om Die Transcendental Soul Dead Singularitat Or something like that. At the best of times, I'm not that big on black metal. I don't like the screams. I don't like the intentionally awful production. Often it's repetitive. The drumming is... A lot of the time, just blast beats the whole song. I'm sorry to you back there fans out there. It was like, oh, this guy. <sighs> yep, this song is just 25 minutes. 25 minutes of this one little synth line. It's a really cool synth line. Stretch it over 25 minutes, though? No. There's wind sounds. There's every now and then, like, little parts where the song kind of breaks up. Most of it, though, is just terrible. There's no guitars, there's no drums, not even bass. It's just that annoying synth line and sound effects. Now, like I just said, if it was that as intro, good. Then it just becomes a traditional black metal song for the rest of it. That would have been tolerable. Oh my god, that's... I still got my DVDs and stuff over there from my Game of Thrones and Breaking Bad ranking. 
You guys better watch that, by the way. So, in short, these are all legendary bands with a lot of material, quite a few rough patches in the discography. And, you know what they say? They can't all be bangers. They can't. And these bands definitely prove that. And for that being said, guys, I'll see you in the next one.